In the Old West, stories of outlaws and their notorious deeds have become legendary. Many, like Doc Holliday, Billy the Kid, and Bell Star, followed complex paths into crime. Holliday's transition from dentist to gunslinger was driven by illness. Billy the Kid turned to outlaw life after being orphaned, and Star, influenced by post-Civil War chaos, found herself in a life of crime. These outlaws' lives were often short and violent, but their actions left an unforgettable imprint on frontier history. Here are the tales of eight infamous Wild West criminals. The Old West Bandit Queen, Bell Star. Through the hazy lens of history, Bell Star's legacy is hard to define. To some, she was a criminal mastermind, while to others, she was merely a woman caught up with Wild West outlaws, much like Calamity Jane. Nevertheless, Starr left her mark on the American frontier. Born on February 5, 1848 in Carthage, Missouri, as Myra Maybell Bell Shirley, Starr had a privileged childhood. Her parents owned lucrative businesses and Starr received a good education although she also enjoyed shooting guns with her brother, Bud. However, like Jesse James, Starr's life changed during the Civil War. Bud, who had joined a pro-Confederate guerrilla group, was killed, and the family's businesses began to decline. Starr and her family soon relocated to Texas, where she began associating with Wild West outlaws. In Texas, Starr met Cole Younger of the James Younger Gang, and later married another outlaw, Jim Reed. She joined Reed in stealing horses, cattle, and money, often dressed in velvet skirts. However, some sources suggest she focused more on raising her two children than on criminal activities. Reed's death at the hands of another outlaw in 1874 did not deter Starr from a life of crime. She married a Native American man named Sam Starr, and the couple allegedly engaged in horse stealing and bootlegging operations together. Bell and Sam Starr also provided shelter to more infamous outlaws like Jesse James. It's no surprise that Bell and Sam Starr both spent time in jail for horse theft. In 1886, Sam Starr died in a confrontation with an old enemy. Bell Starr remarried shortly afterward, but soon met a mysterious end. On February 3rd, 1889, someone fatally shot her while she was riding alone. Suspicion fell on her husband, her neighbor, and even her two children. To this day, her mysterious death remains unsolved. Laura Bullion, member of the Wild Bunch. Some Wild West outlaws chose a life of crime, but for Laura Bullion, it was almost inevitable. Born around 1876 in Knickerbocker, Texas, Bullion's father was an outlaw who introduced her to William Carver and Ben Kilpatrick of Butch Cassidy's Wild Bunch. By the age of 15, Bullion was romantically involved with Carver and had entered the rough world of prostitution. Eventually, she joined the Wild Bunch gang, committing various crimes alongside them. Known as the Rose of the Wild Bunch, Bullion sold stolen goods, forged signatures, and may have even disguised herself as a man to participate in heists. In July 1901, she took part in a train robbery in Montana where the gang stole $60,000 and split the money. By then, her affections had shifted from Carver to Kilpatrick, and the two fled together. However, their time on the run was brief. In November 1901, authorities caught Bullion and Kilpatrick in either St. Louis, Missouri, or Knoxville, Tennessee. Bullion received a five-year prison sentence, while Kilpatrick was sentenced to 15 years for their roles in the robbery. After her release three and a half years later, Bullion decided to change her ways, earning an honest living as a seamstress and interior designer. Kilpatrick, however, returned to crime and was killed on March 13, 1912, while attempting to rob a Southern Pacific train in Texas. Laura Bullion, on the other hand, changed her name to Frida Bullion Lincoln, claimed to be a Civil War widow, and lived quietly in Memphis, Tennessee until her death in 1961 at the age of 85. Johnny Ringo, the Old West outlaw who died a mysterious death. Most Wild West outlaws are known for how they lived, 
but Johnny Ringo is famous for how he died. To this day, the events surrounding Ringo's death in 1882 in Arizona remain a mystery, with numerous theories emerging over the years. Ringo seemed destined for a life of crime. He was related to both the James brothers and the Younger brothers, and he even spent a year at the Younger's home after witnessing his father's fatal shotgun accident. Despite these troubling beginnings, Ringo initially stayed on the right side of the law. According to the National Park Service, Ringo's descent into infamy began at age 25 when he got into trouble for shooting a man and threatening two lawmen. Ringo soon earned a reputation as a gunfighter. Interestingly, he briefly considered a career as a lawman. By 1879, however, Ringo had arrived in Tombstone, Arizona, where he joined a group of cattle rustlers known as the Clanton Gang. This alliance put him at odds with the town's lawmen, the Earp brothers, and their friend, Doc Holliday. Although Ringo did not take part in the OK Corral shootout, he was disliked by Holliday and the Earps. When Wyatt Earp's brother Morgan Earp was killed, some suspected Ringo was responsible. A few months later, on July 14, 1882, Ringo was also found dead. A teamster discovered him sitting against a tree with a gun in his hand and a bullet wound to his head. While a coroner ruled his death a suicide, some believe he was shot, with both Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday considered potential suspects. Big Nose Kate, the love of Doc Holliday's life. No story about Doc Holliday is complete without mentioning Big Nose Kate, his lover and the most significant romantic partner of his life. Born Maria Isabella Magdona. Horoni on November 9, 1849, in present-day Slovakia, Horoni immigrated to the United States at a young age. Tragically, she faced hardship upon arrival. After her parents died, she was placed in the care of an abusive man. Escaping from this situation, Horney attempted to become a nun and later a wife and mother. Allegedly, she lost her husband and child to yellow fever, though their existence was never confirmed. Alone in the Wild West, she turned to prostitution for survival. She worked in St. Louis, Missouri, before moving to Dodge City, Kansas, and Fort Griffin, Texas. In 1877, she met Doc Holliday in Fort Griffin. They quickly formed a bond. When Holliday was arrested during a card game, Big Nose Kate sprang into action. She set a fire to distract the townspeople, went to the hotel where Holliday was held, threatened his guards with pistols, and escaped with him to Dodge City on stolen horses. Their relationship was passionate but tumultuous. After the gunfight at the OK Corral, Holliday sought comfort with Kate, reportedly expressing his distress to her. Despite their strong connection, their relationship was marked by frequent disputes. In a moment of anger and drunkenness, Kate even implicated Holliday in a murder, which significantly strained their relationship. They briefly reconciled as Holliday lay dying at the age of 36, but Kate continued to live independently. Unlike many other figures of the Wild West who met untimely deaths, Kate eventually found honest work as a housekeeper. She lived a long life, passing away just five days before her 90th birthday. The Deadly Dentist Doc Holliday John Henry Doc Holliday did not set out to become a Wild West legend. Born on August 14, 1851 in Griffin, Georgia, he initially aspired to be a dentist. However, illness and fate intervened. After completing dental school and starting his practice, Holliday was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Advised that he might have only a few months to live, he followed a doctor's recommendation to move west, hoping the dry air would prolong his life. Instead, the move introduced Holliday to saloons, gambling, and a new, more dangerous lifestyle. His persistent coughing made it difficult to maintain his dental practice so he turned to gambling to make a living. Frequently involved in saloon brawls, Holliday carried a revolver and earned the nickname The Deadly Dentist. In 1877, Holliday was arrested in Fort Griffin, possibly for stabbing a man or for illegal gambling. Unlike many outlaws, he attempted to return to a lawful life. After moving to Dodge City, Kansas, with his significant other, Big Nose Kate, he tried practicing dentistry again. During this period, he formed a significant friendship with lawman Wyatt Earp. When the Earp brothers headed to Tombstone, Arizona in 1879, Holliday joined them. In Tombstone, 
He supported the Earps in their efforts to control the town's criminal activities, culminating in the famous 1881 gunfight at the O.K. Corral, where three outlaws went to their graves. When the Earp brothers headed to Tombstone, Arizona in 1879, Holiday joined them. In Tombstone, he supported the Earps in their efforts to control the town's criminal activities, culminating in the famous 1881 gunfight at the O.K. Corral, where three outlaws went to their graves. By 1887, Holiday's tuberculosis had severely deteriorated his health. Seeking relief, he went to Glenwood Springs, Colorado, hoping the hot springs would help. Sadly, however, Holiday passed away at the age of 36. The infamous Old West Outlaw, Billy the Kid. Before becoming a legendary Wild West Outlaw, Billy the Kid was known as Henry McCarty. Born in 1859 in New York City, he lost his father at a young age and moved west with his mother. By the age of 15, he was an orphan. Despite attempts to live a normal life, McCarty began getting into trouble. According to historical data, one of his teachers noted that he was no more problematic than other boys. But McCarty started with petty theft. In 1875, he was jailed for stealing clothes from a Chinese laundry. However, his story didn't end there. McCarty quickly escaped by climbing up a chimney. Now a fugitive, he embraced his outlaw life, quickly escalating his criminal activities beyond petty theft. As a teenager, McCarty worked as a cowboy and ranch hand in Arizona, where he earned the nickname Billy the Kid due to his youthful appearance. He spent his free time drinking, gambling, and stealing horses. Most historians agree that in 1877, Billy the Kid shot Frank Windy Cahill at the Camp Grant Army Post in Arizona, marking his first killing. There are also rumors that he had killed Apache Native Americans earlier. His notoriety grew from there. Billy the Kid found work on John Tunstall's ranch in Lincoln County, New Mexico. He became a central figure in the Lincoln County War after Sheriff William Brady shot Tunstall dead. Seeking revenge, Billy the Kid and others targeted Brady. Despite this turmoil, he continued to evade capture. Eventually, after another incident and a death sentence, McCarty escaped jail once more, taking a horse and leaving two lawmen behind. This dramatic escape marked the beginning of the end for Billy the Kid. On July 14, 1881, Sheriff Pat Garrett tracked him to Fort Sumner, New Mexico. There, Billy the Kid's life ended at just 21 years old. Jesse James, the Confederate guerrilla turned Wild West outlaw. The life of Jesse James, like many Wild West outlaws, was significantly influenced by the Civil War. Born on September 5, 1847 in Clay County, Missouri, he was a young teen when the war began in 1861. Although Jesse was too young to enlist, the conflict soon reached his home. Union militiamen came to the James's residence and mistreated Jesse and his stepfather. Jesse then joined a Confederate guerrilla group led by Bloody Bill Anderson. He and his brother, Frank James, took part in violent raids against Union soldiers. In 1864, they were involved in a raid on Centralia, Missouri, where the guerrillas killed 22 Union soldiers. Shortly after, Jesse and Frank assisted in the deaths of approximately 100 federal troops who tried to capture their group. After the war, Jesse did not retire from his violent lifestyle. Instead, he and Frank formed the infamous James Younger Gang. They caused chaos across the Wild West, robbing over 20 banks and trains, stealing around $200,000, and eliminating those who stood in their way. Jesse often suggested that they rob to avenge the South and help the poor, but there is no evidence they distributed any money. Jesse's criminal activities eventually caught up with him, though he escaped capture during a failed bank robbery in Northfield, Minnesota in 1876. Many of his gang members were arrested or killed. Jesse and Frank then associated with brothers Charlie and Bob Ford. However, Bob Ford betrayed Jesse. On April 3, 1882, Bob Ford, seeking a $5,000 bounty, shot Jesse James while he was straightening a painting on the wall. In the end, Ford received only a fraction of the promised reward. The infamous gunslinger, John Wesley Harden. Unlike other Old West outlaws who turned to crime out of desperation or greed, John Wesley Harden seemed driven by a different motive. By his own count, 
He claimed to have taken the lives of 44 men before his death in 1895. Born in Texas on May 26, 1853, Hardin showed aggressive tendencies from a young age. According to Old West, he once attacked a classmate, nearly causing serious harm after a dispute over a girl. At age 15, Hardin killed a black freedman named Meiji. A Freedmen's Bureau agent reported that Meiji had objected to Hardin's mistreatment, but Hardin, from a Confederate family, later claimed he was fleeing the injustice and misrule of post-Civil War Reconstruction, as noted in Blood Letters and Badman. Hardin did not seem interested in justice. He moved from place to place, working as a cattle hand, gambling in saloons, and increasing his number of victims. According to historical records, he even shot a man for snoring too loudly. Hardin once said, They say I killed six or seven men for snoring. Well, it ain't true. I only killed one man for snoring. Hardin served 14 years in prison for murder and briefly worked as a lawman after his release. However, his life ended the way he lived it. Hardin became angry when local lawman John Selman arrested his girlfriend for illegally carrying guns in El Paso, Texas. Hardin's threats against Selman prompted action. On August 19, 1895, Selman found Hardin playing dice in Acme Saloon. Just after Hardin reportedly said his last words, four sixes to beat, Henry, Selman took action. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.